second Sunday in the year of our Lord of March. The Lord has blessed Galilee once again. I don't know about you, but I'm happy. Been through a pandemic, and the Lord has brought us out. And by the stripes, I'm healed. By his stripes, I am God has truly blessed all of us in a mighty way. But now as we come, we open the doors of our Father's house. Is there anyone that wants to come as a candidate for baptism? We ask now that you come.
want everybody to see the door. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all 
all men. At this time, we turn our further services over to our corporate conductor and our offer. Get ready for our offer.
Thank you for those that gave and those that have a desire to give. We ask you to bless this offering in a special way. Let it be used according to your purpose and according to your will. We thank you and we praise you in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen.
You need to stop doubting our young folks, Lord God. So we ask for strength and mercy right now, Lord God, upon them. And upon us, Lord God, that we may be able to continue to be who you call us to be in their lives, Lord God. Let us be a positive influence to all our young people. We know, Lord God, they've been kept in you all the way with praise for it. We come right now, Lord God, listen to Pastor Coleman to you. We ask you to bless him in a mighty way, Lord God. As a head of this, this crop, Lord God, we ask you to continue to give him the insight, the ability, the strength to lead these young people, Lord God. We pray for the men of the hour, Lord God, who are great bread today, Lord God. Speak to him in a mighty way, Lord God. Give them down to your house, Lord God, and may be able to continue to bless these your people, Lord God. Give them a word from on high, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, to continue to bless our choir, our choir, our musicians, the whole congregation, our people ministry, our worship, Lord God. Bless them all, Lord God, that we can continue to do what you call them to do, Lord. This scripture right now, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, to bless this whole community as a whole. That we may be a back from the hill, Lord God. Speak it right now, Lord God. We ask it all in your daughter's son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen.
what your status is, somewhere in your lifetime, you're going to have some trouble. You're going to have some dog days. You don't know how to get out of them, but if you turn to God, He will. He'll fix it for you. A time when you don't have to go and look for trouble. Because trouble will come and find you. Trouble will show up just because it wants to. You can be riding in your car. Trouble. You can be sitting in your living room. Trouble. You can be sitting in church and trouble can show his ugly head. You can get a phone call. Trouble. You can even be minding your business. Not bothering anybody. Trouble. Trouble comes when you least expect it. You know, that old devil don't mind who he gets on and who he bothers. Trouble. Just like we're sitting right here. Somebody can get a phone call and your loved one has been hurt or passed away. Trouble. Brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that God is our refuge. And our strength in the very present time of trouble. In our text today, the psalmist presents us with three fundamental issues. When trouble shows up at your door. In the text, it reveals to us the shelter of God's heaven. It says that God is our refuge. In other words, God is our safeness. You know, when you can't turn and go nowhere else or no, to go to nobody, you can always turn to God. He said in his word, he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He is our refuge. He's a safety zone. He, he's a shelter in the midst of the storm. If you haven't had a storm, brothers and sisters, the book of Job tells us it's one on the way. I don't know about you, but I've had my share of ups and downs. But in the midst of it all, I turned to God. He helped me when I couldn't turn to my so-called friends. When I couldn't turn to my wife. When I couldn't turn to my family. The only help that I had came from God. He's the one that can build you up. He can also put you down. But God, if you, if you put your trust in God, then you don't have to worry about friends or so-called friends. You don't have to worry about anything else. All you need to know is God has your back. He will do it for you. When, when, when you're at your darkest hour, when you have you you at your last day, when you don't know where your next meal is coming from, call his name. All you have to do is call him. He will answer. He might not answer when you want him, but he will answer. He's a safety zone. He'll keep you. If your life one will come, just know that God will keep you in a safe place. It may be dark at that time. Might not seem like you have no other turn, nowhere to go, but but God. If you call him, church, he will answer. He's a rock in the weary man. He's a shelter in the time of the storm. God prepares us to, to face trouble and storms of the life, of our life. No matter how bad your, your trouble or your storm may be, just know that he is in the midst of your storm. He'll carry you through. But you have to be on his side to get through your storm. You can't do it by yourself. Anybody think they can weather a storm by yourself, then you're wrong. Because if God brought you to it, then he'll bring you through. He's a safe place. You have to believe it and you have to trust it. That's just like walking on faith. When, when you're about to leave that job you've been on for 20 years and you step out in faith, you know God's going to take care of you. You know, if, you, if he's leading you from that old job, then he has a new place for you and he's not going to take you there just to leave you. He has something better for you. But you have to trust God. You have to believe God and know that he will. If he said it in his word, then he will. God said that I am. If he said that I am, then that sells it. It doesn't matter about anything else. You have to trust God and know that he will fix it for you. 
you know there's a blessing just waiting just to happen. You know, the Bible says, you know, when, when praises go up, blessings surely come down. So if you praise your way through the storm, just like when you didn't have the storm, if you were praising and shouting in, you need to praise and shout now. Because God will do it. He'll fix it. I'm a firm believer. I've been through it. I don't look like what I've been through, but I've been through it. And I know God is. He's always good. He's always been on my side. I ain't always been on his side, but he's always been on mine. He's brought me through some bad days. The song said I had some good days, and I've had some bad days. I had some heels to climb, but I made it. I made it. Thank God. The psalmist tells us God is our strength. Brothers and sisters, it's important to, to understand the word in the conjunction. It says refuge and strength. It didn't just say he's our refuge. He said he's our refuge and our strength. That these two words connect two or more phrases together. In other words, not only is he our refuge, but he's our strength. He, he's our strength because he infuses us with the strength. Therefore, we are able to stand. If we didn't have God in our lives, how do you think we'd be able to move? How do you think we'd be able to, to stand and, and walk around? How do you think we'd be able to feed ourselves? How, how do you think you would be able to, to wake up in the morning if you didn't have God's strength? God wakes you up. The long clock don't have nothing to do with it. God wakes you up. God starts you on your way. God puts fools on your table. He put clothes on your back. God is everything. We have to have, he's a safety place. He's our strength. You have to believe that. You have to know that when you laid down last night that, that God was going to stop out this morning and wake you up. If, if, if God didn't wake you up this morning, that means he had a better plan for you. We love you, but he loves you most. So he will come in. And he'll take his own. He'll take his own. But that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. That means that, that you're living on the other side. But there's no more words. No more trouble. No more hard ass. See, see, we talk about that word trouble. See, when you go home with God, then you don't have to worry about trouble. You don't have to worry no more. You don't have to worry about this old mean, cruel word. God is our strength. He gives us power. Yes, All I'm trying to tell you, brothers and sisters, is when you got Jesus, yes, you got everything that you need. Yes, He'll, God will be the one that will shut down a road in an open freeway. Mm -hmm. he, he, when, when you have Jesus, he, he'll fight you that way. Yes, he'll be a firefighter for you. If a fire comes along, he'll put that fire when, when you have God, He'll be your fiery furnace. He'll be your protector. Uh, when, when you got Jesus, He'll turn your midnights into days. When you got Jesus, He'll be your up and your down. He'll be your milk. When you got Jesus, He'll pick you up when you fall. He'll feed you when you're home. When you're sick and think you can't get well, he, he's our strength. He gives us that that we need, that we can't give ourselves. Uh, I, I just stopped by this morning to tell you that, that God is our strength. All you need is to do is trust him, lean on him, lean on his everlasting word. If you don't believe it, pick, pick this old Bible up and start reading. Uh, wherever you read, there is a word for you when you read. This, this is your, your refuge. This is your strength. You just have to pick it up and open it up. You know, some of us have Bibles that, that sit on the shelf for a while. You don't pick it up until on Sunday. It ain't doing you no good just to pick it up on Sunday. You got to read it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then twice on Sunday. 
You just can't have a Bible. Anybody can go to the store and buy it. You know, some of us even have been in the hotels and took the Bible. Looks low. 
took up that old hymn. Uh, how many of you know that he's the one that they stressed about? He's the one that hung high and he's the one that lived and he died. Uh, but on that third day, they, they said it was three days. Uh, they took him off that old rugged cross. They put him in a old bar too. Uh, and how many of you know that God didn't pray to stay there? He stayed three the whole day. But on that, on that third day, brother, but, but before I get to that third day, uh, on that Friday, no activity. Uh, uh, all day Friday, no activity. On that Saturday, still no activity. Everybody wondering what's going on. But on that third day, on that third day, he got up with all power. All power in his hands. He, he just saved the old rats like you and that. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but, but God has been my student. He's been my protector. He's been my provider. He is Jehovah's power.
God, we talk the word of God. God is it. Yes. Everything we need, He is. Amen. Thank you, my beloved sister. Uh, and the choir that sung today, Brother Mendy and Brother Jeff, Jonathan, thank you, all of you, for the wonderful job that you did today. Amen. Amen. We've got a few things. I, I want y'all to come on up in a minute. But I got Emmanuel, I make an appeal on my Emmanuel men that we got a five ball preacher coming next Sunday. Amen. Amen. He can show no preach. But Matthew, Emmanuel, would you come? You pass the call, members in the forecast, officers, members, and visiting and friends. I take the time to invite each of you to come out next week to celebrate our annual men day observation with us. On Sunday, March the 18th at 8 o'clock a.m., we will have breakfast with a special guest speaker, Pastor Derek Hudson from Ebenezer Baptist Church. Then on Sunday, March the 19th, we will have our annual men day program at 10 a.m. with guest speaker, Pastor Daniel Johnson from the First Missionary Church of Cropwell, Alabama. We are asking for an assessment of $100 per adult. We will have a wonderful time in the Lord. We want you to come out and be blessed. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. One thing I want to one year is it's important, especially in this neighborhood, there has a sex offender in our neighborhood. I got his address. If and if you don't like it, say something about it. Amen. Because if this was over in who? They wouldn't be there. Amen. 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 Let me say that again. If he was in this table, he would not be there. Right. I'm going to give you the information. He lives at 3515 Carver Avenue Southwest. That's right down the street. Amen. Amen. This man raped a child or under 16. And he got, he got, just got out, but he was charged with first degree rape and first degree sexual abuse. Amen? Uh, I think I need to find out who to go to, and I'm going to get our pastor and, and our fellowship maybe to uh, look at this. His name is Charles Anthony Campbell. He's 56 years old. Amen? So I just want to let you know those who watch out in our neighborhood. Amen? Amen. We thank God. Now, next Sunday, Dr. Johnson coming from Parkwell, Alabama. He's a good old country preacher. Yes, he can. He can break. Thank God for him. We pray for him. Brother John and Sister Kelly is in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, let's pray for them. Amen. Amen. Brother Matthew, uh, thank God he had a little procedure, but he's doing fine. Amen. 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 He is doing good. Sister Marable is in Princeton Hospital. Sister Chris is at home. Is that right? Sister Chris is at home. And uh, all of our sister heard and all of our sick and shut in, let's pray for them. Amen? Amen. 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 We thank God. Sister Secretary, would you come? Now, what I'm going to do, Sister Secretary, give the names and present the certificates. I want, I'm going to give the benediction. I want you to come up. And shake these young people's hand. Amen. Would y'all do that for me? Amen. Amen. Would you do that for me? 
everybody. He could y'all come on. It's a blessing to have. Amen. Amen. But William, thank you, sir. I didn't see you. You're hiding back there. Reverend William, God, it's just so good to have him back with us today. Amen. Amen. But uh, so, let you come. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. God has kept us through this pandemic and has kept our children. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we can start off with our new highlights with our first three baptism candidates. First, we have Jaden Moffitt. And on Friday, March 16th, 